Hi, Mama Dear. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm so well. So I watched the show this week. I was hooked. I had to sleep with the lights on, I have to admit. <laughs> a bit of a scary cat, but it was uh -huh. so good. I was so hooked. So have you seen the show? You know, not yet. Not yet. Uh, I plan to. Um, probably when we, uh, uh, a few months before a hopeful season two. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I need to give a little, myself a little, little time from it prior to watching it, just so I can separate myself and like, you know, hyper criticism from the uh, actual experience of watching the show, so. Mm -hmm. So in the show about watching, do you tend to watch your own projects? Not really, <laughs> not, not as much as I used to. I mean, uh, initially I did, but um, as, you know, as I've done more and more projects, I've found the experience on set is always the most fulfilling and the uh, the finished product usually, you know, it's great to see other people's work and parts of the process you haven't been involved in. Yeah. Um, so I, I will watch, especially if I'm not involved in it as heavily as say I am in this, but um, I, I like to give it e either A, a little bit of space or just like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just savor the experience that I had on set and just remember those experiences because, you know, every take, you do so many takes yeah, and they're all so different, and you cannot put them all in the film or TV show. It's just, and it's so it's it it it's it's so interesting. All those rehearsals and all those experiences. I mean, they live in the project in a, in a sense, but not in the way that you know as the same as being there on the day. You know. Right, right. Did you have a rehearsal period for this show? Um, yeah, a, a protracted one, obviously. You know, with the um, we, we shot this, we started shooting this, um, I believe the beginning of November. Right. Uh, so COVID kind of restricted a lot of our, um, uh, you know, what we could have done typically with some rehearsal, but we, you know, we got together in a room with masks, um, you know, social distance and, and we did some table reads, but a lot of a lot of things we had to like, just kind of like, well, we're just gonna have to talk this out over the phone or on Zoom, we did some Zoom table reads as well. Nice. And uh, yeah, but I, I was, uh, I was so impressed with the cast of the show and the dedication. So, uh, you know, we, we figured it out pretty well. Mm -hmm. And it helps that a lot of it is in isolation on screen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it worked out. It, it, you know, I guess it did. <laughs> but uh, pain, yeah, the, uh, the loneliness was, uh, I hope it's palpable because it was real. <laughs> Right, right. Very method. <laughs> so tell everyone about Archive 81 and a little about your character, Dan. Um, Archive 81 for me is a, a love story. Um, that's why I signed on to do it. I was really excited about the prospect of this. Uh, I'm not sure how full, full I can get into a... <laughs> Into There's characters. a lot of spoilers. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be very, very, very careful here. But... Um, you know, love story, and I don't even mean like in the romantic sense. Um, I, I, I mean, for me, I felt it always kind of like this, like you know, uh, large, uh, full platonic sense, but um, uh, but still a love story, whether it's you know familial or platonic or even romantic, um, separated through uh, time and and space, and you know, well, I'll hold the rest. Of it. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing that always kind of keys me in that there's the, like a love story somewhere in the story. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for something like that. Aww. And Dan, Dan uh, is the ultimate romantic to me, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I know it's loosely based on a podcast. Were you familiar with the podcast? Did you go back and listen to it? I, I did. I listened to a couple of the first episodes and I was, I forget who I was talking, I was, I was talking with Rebecca and she suggested that I put a pause and that I actually agreed because, you know, you know, there's there are voices that you get familiar with and you don't want to have that interfere with your actual process because we're doing a different thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was, but it was interesting and I, and I, and I, I really liked it actually, it's pretty cool. Yeah, did you get a chance to meet Mark and Dan? I didn't, no, I mean, COVID, I probably would have, but right. I didn't meet a lot of people. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> this would be the cast on episode, so. Yeah, it's a bummer. 
Yeah, but I read that you had known Dina for many years and this is your first time working together. So how did yeah. you two first meet? Uh, I met her, I think I met her when I was 18. Um, wow. It's crazy. Think about it. uh, we met at a school. Uh, we met at a school <laughs> that shall not be named by me anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was one of those. <laughs> and, and yeah, she was just like, always very sweet and throughout the years we'd always uh, you know we went to other schools after afterwards and we'd always run into each other be at the same parties and et cetera et cetera so just throughout the year we'd hang out here and there and and then you know we had the opportunity to work together and it was, it was a great experience working with her she's great uh, so tell me about working with her what were some of your favorite memories of doing that dina's an athlete uh, <laughs> Dina, I think she's a legit athlete, by the way. Yeah, but, she started uh, off as a dancer, I think. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. I just, well, I mean, first, I, first and foremost, like I said, the, uh, the diligence of this entire cast is something that I think was really, uh, really special to me. I think that's the most important thing in this business, uh, hard work, um, and really putting your all into it, no, no cutting corners. And, and mm -hmm. she was also part of that in a in a massive way and I, I have the utmost respect for that the utmost um but uh you know there's just I just love it when you can sit down with somebody it, sometimes it's for me anyway it's a little bit harder to get into something with someone if you know them um because there's so there's a whole other history that you got to get out of the way um but that wasn't the case with Dean and I um at least from my perspective uh yeah it was just like a, it was a very simple easy um relationship in which we just talked and listened to each other and and that and that relationship played itself so it, it felt very natural and free it was, it was great mm -hmm. i think you both bring such like a warmth and like a curiosity to each of your characters mm -hmm. which i love too yeah oh, that's great. so what were some of your favorite scenes to shoot favorite Without <laughs> spoiling anything, I know it's tough. Mm -hmm. I loved your moments with Matt McGorry. Oh, I love that guy. Matt's <laughs> holding down the whole set. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I I love Matt because we, we did we did a movie together uh, for Netflix actually called Uncork the Remarkable Princess Penny Drake. And yes. um, yeah, it was, it was great. It was great working with that guy again. And I, I just I, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Um, I, I'm trying, I'm really trying to think about what my favorite scene, you know what, a lot of the scenes, um, man, I, I don't uh, want to spoil anything. <laughs> the end scenes, I assume, yeah. But there are, you know, I'll just say whatever, there are some scenes with Melody uh, uh, that I really just um, enjoyed because they were so beautifully and simply written um that just gave a lot like just so much space for us to interpret it this way or that way with different intentions but with the same goal every time um yeah there were some 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 of those things that were like half a page long but wow. so full of just like this connection between these two people who just like each other and again i don't necessarily mean romantic it's just like you know right. when you see someone and it's like i like this person yeah. you know i just like this person i care about this person i want the best for this person I got those that those feelings from these uh, these uh, these pages, and yeah, just to live in that over and over through take after take was that's that's my favorite thing. That was my yeah, favorite. yeah, you could sense that they're drawn to each other, and it's based on their spirits, based on like their giving natures, based on their um, willingness to inquire about things. You can feel yeah. that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, their inquisitiveness. I. I love the idea of Dan having this kind of um, um, remarkable, like he, he had, like he's an archivist, so he records everything. He's looking at everything. He's seeing everything. He's everything. He's always looking around, just seeing what's what, and that's the way that he protects himself. But also, that's how he does his job. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And you also had an amazing directing team. You mentioned Rebecca before, but you yeah. also had Haifa El Mansour and Justin yeah. Benson, Aaron Moorhead. Yeah, what was it like working with each of them? Also different, all great in their own way. Um, I'd seen Rebecca's uh, Electric Children when I was still in school, actually. Wow. And I was like, who, you know, uh, 
who's this young lady? I was Julia Garner. <laughs> uh, actually later I ended up working with, and she was also lovely. And who directed this? Um, because it was so, again, so moving and this kind of just like this very soulful, um, beautiful, it was, it, I just thought it was a gorgeous film. Um, mm -hmm. So when I saw her name was, <laughs> I remember when I first got the, uh, the information about the project, I was like, Rebecca Thomas, this is so exciting. And then it wasn't the next email. I was like, wait, is she not directing? What's going on? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was so, so psyched to work with her. And um, and yeah, she didn't disappoint. She's, again, one of those people that's just in it to do the thing as fully as possible. And yeah, she's a great director. Justin and Aaron was were the pair of directors I worked with next. And they were yeah. also great, a lot of fun. Um, joking around with those guys. Um, I love their movies. I, I'd, I'd only become familiar with them working on the project with, with them, and I saw some of the other movies, which were fantastic, and I cannot believe they learned how to direct and act on the job, just like yeah. making movies. I just love stories like that, um, and they're fantastic. Uh, and Haifa, Haifa, man, Haifa, she's I just loved her like kind of warm energy. And she had like this, this also this vibrant energy and she was very passionate. Um, and you know, that was a, I remember that was a, a particularly tough period of shooting. It was a particularly tough period of shooting um, of COVID and every, you know, just everything yeah. going on in the world. And um, we had a lot of work squeezed in to those weeks. And um, yeah, I just felt like, you know, cared for by her. And, uh, and we had some great private conversations. Yeah. I, they, they assembled an amazing team for the directors as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I'm just curious, sound and music play a really central role in this show, but also in a lot of the roles that you play, like in Patty Cakes, The Get Down. Um, so I'm curious what attracts you to the roles that you take, but also what music are you into? <laughs> I, I, I have to be honest. Okay. The sound music thing is completely happenstance. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, because I'd be a fraud if I didn't tell you the truth. It was, and this is a humble brag, but I don't care. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> go for it, go for it. It was Grandmaster Flash who taught me how to be on beat, period. Like, period. I didn't, I didn't understand the concept. I was so out of rhythm. Uh, <laughs> I was... <laughs> And I was playing him and he was like, what the f <laughs> And so he taught me like on turn turntables what the two four was in a real embodied way. And it's, it's, it is embarrassing because my parents are beautiful dancers. Like my whole family, they, I mean, they know how to dance. And I've always been like too loved, but so, uh, <laughs> so it was completely happenstance. Patty Cakes, I feel like was the result of the get down. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, I just yeah. love the character. And, and meeting the director and yeah so that <laughs> I had nothing to do. um what was your other part <laughs> what, what other music part? are you into uh i'm into pretty much everything i mean you might see david bowie but yep. right behind oh, yeah. he's one of my absolute favorite artists um not just because of his music but because of his kind of ethos um and his again diligence i mean i i saw this uh Man, I saw this exhibit at um, the Brooklyn Museum. David Bowie is. Did you, did you happen to see that? I think I was. No. Oh, oh yeah, well, you're in no. Canada. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was just like how he was just so committed to everything. He would research everything, everything, everything to the point where he, he was specific about what kind of drapes he wanted in his set. And, you know, just like he was, he was all encompassing. And there's a dog. Oh. Uh, yeah, he was. Um, He's a real inspiration of mine, among many, many others. I mean, I just saw Stevie Wonder in concert um, wow. for a benefit concert. And, you know, he's, you have to see him live. You got to see him live. He's amazing. Um, yeah, there have been a couple, Idols is a new, a new kind of post-punk industrial English, well, industrial, they might take offense to, but a, a post-punk <laughs> band from London, that I, or England that I really love. Yeah, I'm, I'm all into it all. Yeah. And you've had some amazing scene partners over the years. You mentioned Julia Garner, um, Dina, but also Felicia Rashad, Nisi Nash and Courtney P. Vance, yeah. Ray Larson, Kristen Stewart, yeah, the man, cast yeah. of The Get Down. I mean, man, I could go right. on and on. Yeah. So who have you worked huh. with in the past that you'd love to work with again, or who you found really giving and a hard worker also, as you were mentioning? 
that's see that's a that's a tough question because i have to say all right <laughs> i have to say all um you know what I'll, I'll say i'll put it like this there's um i'd love to work with my buddy yahya yahya mm -hmm. abdul mateen the second are you familiar with him he's he's yeah. like we went to school together he's just one of my best friends we didn't get we didn't get to work on, we we both got cast in the get down him right after graduating me a year out and um we never got a scene together, which we thought was a shame. We still haven't worked together yet, um, but I'd love to work with him because I have the utmost respect for him as an actor and person. And um, we haven't made a happy yet, so we like that. Aww, hopefully one day soon. I find he also brings like a selfish shrewdness to his roles that you also bring. Sorry? I find that he also brings like a self-assuredness, like a self-confidence oh, yeah. to his roles. Oh, yeah. oh, he's confident for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he brings he's it on scene. screen. Yeah, he he really does. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Him, um, Winston Jew, uh, yeah. there, there were two buddies that I was friends with at school, and, and and something about just them like just being very comfortable in their bodies and possessing space is something I think is very important and a beautiful thing to watch. Mm -hmm. And so it is a Netflix project. So I have to ask, what have you been watching lately? Did I? I just watched Hand of God two nights ago. Oh, uh, I have to say yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And um, what else have I been watching? JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend are watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That's right. Um, other than that, not a whole lot, not a whole lot. I've been riding my bike. That's about it. It's not snowing there? No, no, this is LA. This is great. Oh, I mean, this is okay. the most overcast it's going to be. Well, it was raining all last week in Chinook. Yeah. It's, <laughs> that's okay so you mentioned that there are plans for a season two because it ends on i don't want to spoil anything but it ends on quite a cliffhanger yeah <laughs> you know? yeah i mean you know it's so yeah it, yeah there's there's a lot of hope for a season two um we'll see you know it depends on things that are completely out of my control at this point but uh yeah we'll see and um we'll get back at it with the same full-on energy um, but it certainly wasn't a limited series. <laughs> We're not going to leave that poor guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's happening? He needs, I don't want to say anything, but like yeah, so that like, final yeah. shot, man. Catch a break. Um, but yeah, yeah no, I, it, we're, we're hoping, we'll see. I love it. Well, thank you so, so much for the art that you bring into the world. I really appreciate it. Have an amazing day. Thank you for this. Thank you for taking the time. Oh, it really means a lot. Thank you for the time. Thanks so much. Thank for you.